Here we go. So this is a feeder. That's a ventilation rim. That's your top cover. And I'm going to remove the feeder and put on an inner cover instead. And then put everything back the way I found it. One thing I like about this uh, cold weather, even though it's, the bees are clustering and they're not really doing much with that syrup anymore, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's making all these wasps stupid and lethargic and they're all dying off. So. See the inside of that thing? Oh, the bees clustering. Alright, that's just uh, what I'd like to do is spray them and then knock them off the thing. But anyway, hoping for the best. Again, here we go. Have to hoping for the best here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna just take a quick peek. Let's see which way the wind's blowing. The wind's blowing towards me. So I'll smoke them. How the hell? Just give them a little poof. Tough. So I just want to see. I've been feeding these bees for about a month and a half, and I just and all this these frames up top were uh, drawn comb except for one frame. And one frame had just blank foundation. I think this is the one with the blank foundation. So I just want to see what they've done, they've done with it. I think it's the one. It might be in the other hive. I can't remember now. Whew. Okay, that's that's pretty good. See that? That's uh, So this is not capped, but it's full. And this, that can cause mold if the bees aren't clustering over those open frames in the winter. But I can see right around, most of this is capped. This is beautiful. I tell you, man. I love it. Oh, and I can see they're clustering down below. See that? Probably can't. But there's bees down there and all that honey. You can see the honey. Damn. So I just got stung through this glove. So I mean, what is the hell? You know, I just, I just, just better off wearing dishwashing gloves or no gloves. So this is perfect. This is capped honey, not capped honey, capped syrup, and this is all capped syrup. I can just see. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, this one isn't fully capped. Let's just see here. But sometimes that's how it is on the side. Okay, yeah. I think this is the one that might have. Yeah, I think this is the one. I have to check my records, but one of these frames was completely blank when I put it in about a month and a half ago. But anyway, I like it. See that I'm using my, my pry hook, a J hook to pry them off because this is super glued down. And look at that, baby. Look at that. Look at this. So it's a foundationless frame and it's all capped. Beauty. And there's no queen on there because the queen doesn't usually hang out around the honey frames. They call it uh, they call it the honey barrier. If there's a block of honey up top, the queen doesn't go there until it's eaten out by the drones, not the drones by the by the workers, until they've cleared a space for her. So this is good. I'm confident. I'm not going to dig down. Now, if I was like a new beekeeper, I probably would dig dig down. But I'd want to see, that, make sure that they have honey. Or I would um, weigh the hives if I had a scale, but I don't. And I don't want to pull my back out. Um, so I've never lifted my hives. Never got into that. And I'm going to put this inner cover on upside down so they don't have um, an, a top entrance yet. But come winter, uh, I want them to cluster down below. So I don't want them to have that open top entrance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that when the weather is cold, they're not coming to the top of the hive. They're, they're going to the bottom and clustering down in the bottom. 
Well, maybe I will. You know what? I'll just, I, don't, I think I'm going to put this on because I'll put it on normally, but th there's a lot of propolis underneath that inner cover. So that's going to st stick. I'll let them glue that up, complete that propolis seal. Hopefully it will have some warm days where they can do that. And I will block that top entrance instead of that other jazz I was just talking about. So that's good. That worked. Um, here's another trick. Uh, when we're using uh, when we're using any kind of mesh or screen to screen off the holes in the ventilation rim or anything, um, it has to be steel, metal, hard screen, not the plastic stuff that's the bees will just chew right through the plastic stuff or if it just seems flimsy the bees can chew through it. And I'll show you in a second. The, this camera is sitting on top of a hive where all the uh, whole load of wasps got into this feeder and uh, I couldn't tell where they were getting it in from but they were getting in from holes in the ventilation rim. I bought this ventilation rim and but the holes were screened up with a uh, uh, cheap screen not the good stuff and the bees just chewed right through it. Let's just pop this off. Okay that didn't uh, that didn't work. Anyway so I've just got that feeder uh, I pissed off a few bees there, but I've got this feeder right here. See, there's full bees here. Hopefully, they, no queen. Don't think there is. I'll just leave that there, and eventually, those bees will figure out how to crawl up and find a way back in. So here's the. See the. See, this is the thing that you, you got to deal with with wooden wooden frames, or at least defective boxes. You can't see it here. I mean, maybe you can, but this is. There's actually propolis in this crack already and I think it's from this inner cover and uh, so it's already filling in the crack so I don't know how long it's been since I lit the smoker but I'm not I haven't, I haven't been puffing it and I've barely used it and it's still smoking away smoldering away so the bees in this hive are not as strong well the colony in this hive isn't as strong as the one that I just looked at and they never were and I don't know if they're gonna have that top box filled with cap syrup like the other one did and if they haven't I might just give them some syrup even though it is late uh, it's so cold now that I know the bees aren't really doing a lot of lot with the syrup now <clears throat> but um, we do have a few warm days coming up for the next week so I'm just gonna hope that if I need to give them syrup those warm days will give them opportunity to suck it up and dehydrate it into uh, the consistency of honey. This is the uh, the feeder that got full of uh, wasps again and I can show you the, I've, I've taped up all the holes in the, the, uh, the ventilation room but you can see right here right there on the bottom left they've chewed through that screen and right here, in the bottom, they've chewed through the screen. This doesn't look like a very big hole. And there's one there, too. And it's not a very big hole, but it doesn't need to be big. It just needs to get enough for one wasp to get through, and then they all get through. So, uh, yeah. That's no good when you make screen. You use that cheap screen. All right. Whoops. I can tell this bee's in the That looks like a lot of smoke, but it's just the smoke is just sort of leaking through these the holes in the, in the feeder. Okay, I can tell they've uh, they've built burr comb on top of the frames to the inside of this inner cover, and uh, it's it just, it's not coming up because it's it's glued down with comb. So the way we fix that, besides giving them a little bit of smoke underneath there, hold on a second. It's a bit of a bit of a slight roar there. So what I do is you can't see it on camera but I'm cracking up, I'm putting the hive tool underneath the feeder, cracking it up, lifting it up enough to get a bit of a grip and then I'm twisting it like this and that twists the comb and breaks it off the off the top bars and then and you can feel it, there it is. Yeah and I can tell right now these bees are not filling up those frames. They need more food. It's, it's very late. So this is the comb I was talking about. It, it, they, they use that comb right there. Is this in camera? Yeah. 
they use this this comb. This comb was attached to the underside of the feeder, and it was just like glue. So anyway, this is giving a little tiny poof. If the queen is there, she'll scoot away with just a little hit of smoke, and it's not, you know, they're not going crazy or anything. And uh, let's just see. I really, I don't have high hopes for these guys. And I don't call my bees my girls because they're not girls, they're, they're insects. Okay. So this is what I thought I might see. They're not, they're not capping it and they haven't been able to cap it. Because um, it takes bees. Let me see. You need bees to cap to do all this work and there's just not as many bees in this hive. I'm tempted to grab some honey from one of my stronger hives and just put it on top here. Yeah, see this isn't good. None of this is capped. So this is not great. It's, it's, it's full of uh, nectar or syrup, which is good. But I tell you what I'm gonna do. Okay, that's enough. It's full. It is full, but it's not capped. So I just came up with a big brilliant plan to hopefully fix this. Let me just check the side here. Yeah, so it's all wet. You can see it just glistening with syrup but they haven't had chance to cap it or perhaps evaporate it down to the consistency of honey so that they can cap it. So I will have to keep an eye on this hive and if I had more bees, which I don't, I would steal honey and I could but I just don't think I'm gonna bother. I'm just too busy with other things. So I think this is the frame that I put in about a month ago that didn't have any comb. Uh, yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. So they've, at least they made comb. See, this is the thing, right? Maybe I shouldn't have put that blank frame in so late in the year because they had to use all those resources just to build this comb. Whereas if I left it alone, they would have had drawn comb and they would have just filled it up. Okay, so what I did there is I, um, I just uh, removed the feeder and I uh, put a, a blank inner cover on it, an inner cover that didn't have a, a top entrance. And I put this ventilation rim up top and I think it's okay to open up these ventilation holes now. And with those ventilation holes open, they should be able to dehydrate that sugar syrup into the consistency of honey quicker and hopefully they'll have some capped honey going into winter and I'm not going to give them any more syrup. We have some warm days coming up this week and hopefully those warm days will allow them to dehydrate that syrup and at least dehydrate it and hopefully cap it but at least dehydrate it to the thickness of, of honey so it's less likely to get um, moldy in the sun in the winter but capping is the is the uh what we really want to see them do so that's not great um if i had a lot of hives if i was uh uh you know commercial beekeeper or uh so-called uh, hobbyist beekeeper with you know 20 hives or more um <laughs> i could i could steal honey from some some capped honey from some other colonies and just put it on the top but i don't really have that and uh, I also don't like messing around with my bees much at this time of year. If, if I can risk leaving them alone, if it's not a big risk to leave them alone, I just leave them alone. I don't dig deep, I don't do much with them. The only thing that I, or well, one of the things that I like to make sure that I haven't done is uh, leave a blank frame in the hive. Sometimes you get a blank frame in the top super or the middle super or whatever. And when the bees are clustering down below in the winter and then they work their way up, they hit that blank frame and then they split. It sometimes they hit that, that frame and it's like a knife. It just splits the cluster in two. And so you end up with two smaller clusters that can't stay warm and they, 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 stay, they get cold and they freeze to death because they can't move to the honey frames. Uh, so that's a big one. Um, if I, I have to make sure that I haven't left any blank frames in. And there was one blank frame in this top box, but I just checked it and it's been filled, so it's not, that's, that's not too bad. 
Um, but that's it. Done. So I'm going to do the same thing with both of these feeders. You can see these bees are slowly figuring out that they, they got to climb up here and get out. And then once they do, they'll start scenting and they'll be in in two seconds. And these bees are doing the same thing. They're wondering what happened. Why is the feeder upside down? They're totally disoriented. But once they slide it up to the inner cover, or to the bottom board like this, they will find their way in and everything will be great. But I can still see these bees are bringing in some pollen. So there must be a few things still out and about. So that's that, all done. Before I go to bed tonight, all the, most of these bees, or all of them, should have found their way home. And uh, boy, they really are bringing them some pollen right now. And they're gone. There's one. There's another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 